This episode is brought to you by IVP. Would you like to connect with scripture in a fresh and life-giving way? The founders of Alabaster have collaborated with IVP to present the full text of all four Gospels and the Psalms alongside beautiful, full-color photographs, thoughtful design, and guided meditations. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive any of these titles for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson. And Akemini Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Leviticus 14, Purification of Diseased Skin Infections. The Lord spoke to Moses, This is the law of the diseased person on the day of his purification, when he is brought to the priest. The priest is to go outside the camp and examine the infection. If the infection of the diseased person has been healed, then the priest will command that two live, clean birds, a piece of cedar wood, a scrap of crimson fabric, and some twigs of hyssop be taken up for the one being cleansed. The priest will then command that one bird be slaughtered into a clay vessel over fresh water. Then he is to take the live bird along with the piece of cedar wood, the scrap of crimson fabric, and the twigs of hyssop, and he is to dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird slaughtered over the fresh water, and sprinkle it seven times on the one being cleansed from the disease. Pronounce him clean, and send the live bird away over the open countryside, the seven days of purification. The one being cleansed must then wash his clothes, shave off all his hair, and bathe in water, and so be clean. Then afterward, he may enter the camp but he must live outside his tent seven days. When the seventh day comes, he must shave all his hair, his head, his beard, his eyebrows, all his hair, and he must wash his clothes, bathe his body in water, and so be clean. The Eighth Day Atonement Rituals On the eighth day, he must take two flawless male lambs, one flawless yearling female lamb, three-tenths of an ephath of choice wheat flour, as a grain offering mixed with olive oil and one log of olive oil. And the priest who pronounces him clean will have the man who is being cleansed stand along with these offerings before the Lord at the entrance of the meeting tent. The priest is to take one male lamb and present it for a guilt offering along with the log of olive oil and present them as a wave offering before the Lord. He must then slaughter the male lamb in the place where the sin offering and the burnt offering are slaughtered in the sanctuary. Because like the sin offering, the guilt offering belongs to the priest. It is most holy. Then the priest is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the right earlobe of the one being cleansed, on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest will then take some of the log of olive oil and pour it on his own left hand. Then, the priest is to dip his right forefinger into the olive oil that is in his left hand and sprinkle some of the olive oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. The priest will then put some of the rest of the olive oil that is in his hand on the right earlobe of the one being cleansed, on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. 
on the blood of the guilt offering. And the remainder of the olive oil that is in his hand, the priest is to put on the head of the one being cleansed. So the priest is to make atonement for him before the Lord. The priest must then perform the sin offering and make atonement for the one being cleansed from his impurity. After that, he is to slaughter the burnt offering. And the priest is to offer the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar. So the priest is to make atonement for him, and he will be clean. The Eighth Day Atonement Rituals for the Poor Person If the person is poor and does not have sufficient means, he must take one male lamb as a guilt offering for a wave offering to make atonement for himself. One-tenth of an ephath of choice, wheat flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, a log of olive oil, and two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, which are within his means. One will be a sin offering and the other a burnt offering. On the eighth day, he must bring them for his purification to the priest at the entrance of the meeting tent before the Lord. And the priest is to take the male lamb of the guilt offering and the log of olive oil and wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. Then he is to slaughter the male lamb of the guilt offering. And the priest is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the right earlobe of the one being cleansed on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest will then pour some of the olive oil into his own left hand and sprinkle some of the olive oil that is in his left hand with his right forefinger seven times before the Lord. Then the priest is to put some of the olive oil that is in his hand on the right earlobe of the one being cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the guilt offering and the remainder of the olive oil that is in the hand of the priest, he is to put on the head of the one being cleansed to make atonement for him before the Lord. He will then make one of the turtle doves or young pigeons, which are within his means, a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering along with the grain offering. So the priest is to make atonement for the one being cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of the one in whom there is a diseased infection, who does not have sufficient means for his purification. Purification of Disease-Infected Houses The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, When you enter the land of Canaan, which I am about to give to you for a possession, and I put a disease infection in a house in the land you are to possess, then whoever owns the house must come and declare to the priest, Something like an infection is visible to me in the house. Then the priest will command that the house be cleared before the priest enters to examine the infection so that everything in the house does not become unclean. And afterward, the priest will enter to examine the house. He is to examine the infection. And if the infection in the walls of the house consists of yellowish green or reddish eruptions, and it appears to be deeper than the surface of the wall, then the priest is to go out of the house to the doorway of the house and quarantine the house for seven days. The priest must return on the seventh day and examine it. And if the infection has spread in the walls of the house, then the priest is to command that the stones that had the infection in them be pulled and thrown outside the city into an unclean place. Then they shall scrape the house all around on the inside, and the plaster which they have scraped off must be dumped outside the city into an unclean place. They are then to take other stones and replace those stones and he is to take other plaster and replaster the house. If the infection returns and breaks out in the house after he has pulled out the stones, scraped the house, and it is replastered, the priest is to come and examine it. And if the infection has spread in the house, it is a malignant disease in the house. It is unclean. He must tear down the house, its stones, its wood, and all the plaster of the house, and bring all of it outside the city to an unclean place. Anyone who enters the house all the days the priest has quarantined it will be unclean until evening. Anyone who lies down in the house must wash his clothes. Anyone who eats in the house must wash his clothes. If, however, the priest enters and examines it, and the affection has not spread in the house after the house has been replastered, then the priest is to pronounce the house clean because the infection has been healed. Then he is to take two birds, a piece of cedar wood, a scrap of crimson fabric, and some twigs of hyssop to purify the house. 
and he is to slaughter one bird into a clay vessel over fresh water. He must then take the piece of cedar wood, the twigs of hyssop, the scrap of crimson fabric, and the live bird, and dip them in the blood of the slaughtered bird and in the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. So he is to purify the house with the blood of the bird, the fresh water, the live bird, the piece of cedar wood, the twigs of hyssop, and the scrap of crimson fabric. And he is to send the live bird away outside the city into the open countryside. So he is to make atonement for the house, and it will be clean. Summary of Purification Regulations for Infections This is the law for all disease infections, for scale, for the diseased garment, for the house, for the swelling, for the scab, and for the bright spot, to teach when something is unclean and when it is clean. This is the law for dealing with infectious disease. New Testament reading. Matthew chapter 8, verses 28 through 34. Healing the Jadarene demoniacs. When he came to the other side, to the region of the Jadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were extremely violent, so that no one was able to pass by that way. They cried out, Son of God, leave us alone. Have you come here to torment us before the time? A large herd of pigs was feeding some distance from them. Then the demons begged him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. And he said, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep slope into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen ran off, went into the town, and told everything that had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the entire town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Luke chapter 8 verses 26 through 39. Healing of a Demoniac. So they sailed over to the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped ashore, a certain man from the town met him who was possessed by demons. For a long time this man had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house, but among the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and shouted with a loud voice, Leave me alone, Jesus, Son of the Most High God. I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had started commanding the evil spirit to come out of the man, for it had seized him many times. So he would be bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard. But he would break the restraints and be driven by the demon into deserted places. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they began to beg him not to order them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and the demonic spirits begged Jesus to let them go into them. He gave them permission. So the demons came out of the man and went into the pigs, and the herd of pigs rushed down the steep slope into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they ran off and spread the news in town and countryside. So the people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus. They found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the man who had been demon-possessed had been healed. Then all the people of the Gerasenes and the surrounding region asked Jesus to leave them alone, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare what God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole town what Jesus had done for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Dear Lord, our God our friend, our hope, and our Redeemer. We thank you for your word today. We thank you, O God, that you are indeed our great deliverer. We thank you that you indeed set the captives free, that you bring healing and wholeness. And even along with that, you grant to us a new purpose, one in which to proclaim your name, 
a purpose to point others to your redemptive power in our lives, to testify to the great work of healing and deliverance and restoration that you have done for those who are your children. We thank you, merciful God, for this testimony of this man once bound by demonic possession. We thank you that he indeed was set free to proclaim your word, not only given wholeness, but given a new purpose and mission, O God. We thank you for this testimony. God, we are so grateful for your transformative power, and yet we're also mindful that when you do set the captives free, when you do make people whole again, that there are times when the reactions of the world is not praise. It is to turn away from you. And as we think about this passage and the herd of pigs being lost, the economic loss that came from a man being set free, we are reminded that you, that when you set captives free, there are social and communal implications that some people don't like, that they respond to with fear. And we pray, God, that we would never be in that number, that possessions and greed would not get in the way of us wanting to see each and every person set free and made whole. When you set a person free, O oh God, you change a society around them. And we thank you, O oh God, for your cosmic and communal and redemptive power. For it doesn't just touch one life, it touches an entire community. Let us be forever grateful, O oh God, for your healing and redemptive power in our lives and in the lives of our neighbors. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. So, so, so.